Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tennessee State University National Alumni Association presents in partnership with Tennessee State University, the Roar City Virtual Meet and Greet. Today is Thursday the 13th, and we're so excited to have President Glenda Baskin-Glover of Tennessee State University, President Charles Galbraith of the Tennessee State University National Alumni Association, as well as Dr. Mickey Allen, the Director, Director of Athletics and Head Football Coach Eddie George. Without further ado, we present the Royal City Virtual Meetup. Here is President Galbraith. Good evening, my alumni family and friends. Let me start by saying it's game time. I couldn't be more happy to welcome you to Roar City. Tonight, we are going to get a, a closer look at what's going on in Roar City. What exactly is Roar City? How can we support Roar City? Uh, when we think about all of the, the ideas and, and all of the excitement that put together what we are going to experience tonight, I want you to sit back and relax and just enjoy learning a little bit more about what's going on in the land of golden sunshine. So let me say welcome, welcome, welcome citizens of Roar City. It is my pleasure to introduce to you the eighth president of our illustrious Tennessee State University, Dr. Glenda Glover. Thank you, good evening. It is, it is such a pleasure, such an honor to be here tonight, this evening, to say hello to everyone, President Galbraith, members of the TSU National Alumni Board of Directors, and to all alumni present today. It is my pleasure, an absolute pleasure to join you tonight as we go through um, the, what we're called here for, <laughs> to, to talk to you about an athletics program. But before we do that, let me just provide uh, just a, a moment or so of a brief update on TSU, knowing that you want to hear from the men of the hour, you're going to yield most of my time. But I want to inform you of a few things that are going on. We are returning to TSU in person this fall. Classes will be in person. Of course, some will be online still. The residence halls will be open. We have all the protocols in place, still require masks. We ask everyone to be vaccinated. Uh, many of our employees have already been vaccinated and it continues today, and several students have not been vaccinated, but a lot of them have. So we are working on student vaccinations now. The faculty return to campus in August, and the staff administrators return in July. We're working hard to get the students back on campus. I hope you can help us in this regard, help us spread the word that we are in person and students will be in residence halls. So if you help us get that word out, we would appreciate it. So we ask me, how can we help? How can alumni help? The best way you can help us is to help TSU, is to help recruit talented students. I want to go over two more areas. The first is homecoming, and the second is the status of the land grant funds over to TSU. We will be having homecoming in person this fall. October 30th is the game. So we're very excited, so stay tuned. A lot of things are coming down the pipe. It'll be safe. It, it will be safe. We will have fun. Homecoming activities, the honorees, the grand marshals, and all that will be announced later, so stay tuned. The last area I want to just briefly mention it's the land grant funding. It's one of the biggest matters we have going at this time. Representative Harold Love and I were discussing a lot more detail on Saturday morning, but in short, the Budget Department of the State of Tennessee has determined that TSU is owed $544 million from the, from the state. This came from years of not just underfunding, but unfair treatment of TSU as compared to treatment of UT. So again, we will say a lot more on Saturday. Mr. President, Thank you for this opportunity to provide this information. I am pleased to extend greetings to you on behalf of your alma mater, Tennessee State University, and I yield the remainder of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Glover. It's always a pleasure. We certainly want to congratulate our new graduates. Uh, Tennessee State University is doing amazing things each and every day. And Tennessee State University's foundation, of course, are the students. The students matter most. And so we definitely take this time to salute the class of 2021. And we know that you have bright futures and everything beyond John and Merritt Boulevard is just going to get brighter and brighter for you. It is now my privilege to bring to you 
uh, the new director of alumni relations. She is definitely all things TSU. It is my pleasure to present to you, Ms. Debbie Howard. Thank you, National President Charles Galvarez, and to my big blue family, welcome, welcome. It is on behalf of the Office of Alumni Relations for the Tennessee State University, we are so excited to bring to you the meet and greet of Athletic Director Mickey Allen and our very own President Glover and Head Coach Eddie George. I cannot tell you how many alums that have texted me and called me and emailed me asking me for updates on when can I buy season tickets. So alums, here you go. Um, take it away, Coach George. Let us know all the details and how we as a Big Blue family can support you in this upcoming season. When you win, we win. We are excited and ready to go. Thank you, alums, for tuning in. Awesome. Thank you so much, Debbie. You can feel the excitement. We are just ready to get back out there in the world. I've had some opportunities to return to campus and the students are, are just definitely ready to see your alumni faces. And I know that those athletic programs all around and we want to take this time to certainly salute all athletics. Uh, we always really focus on basketball and football, but definitely we want to salute all of our coaches all of our athletes for the, the work that they're doing and the ways that they represent us each and every game. So thanks to each and every one of you. It is now my privilege to bring to you a, a gentleman who uh, he has really been an inspiration to me. Uh, I will tell you that our athletic director, he has vision, he's creative, he's charismatic. He really understands how to play this game at a high level. So I want to bring to you a, a gentleman who, um, he used to wear orange uh, when he was in his college experience, but he certainly has added blue to his wardrobe. He definitely has gained a lot from Tennessee State University. He, he actually is an alumni. He has a master's from Tennessee State University, but also more importantly, he grasped his wife from Tennessee State University. When you find your wife at TSU, you can't go wrong there. So it is my pleasure to bring to you Dr. Mickey Allen. Tennessee State University's athletic director. How you doing, Dr. Allen? President Galvez, I appreciate that that introduction. That was awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, first and foremost, though, I want to uh, want to say thank you uh, to Dr. Glover. Uh, in such an unprecedented time, we have a leader in President Glover that's been innovative, and that is this. We've we've withstood, we've withstood you know the pandemic and the prospect of our students coming back. And what we've done behind the scene under her leadership uh, has been unprecedented. So thank you, Dr. Glover, for that. And then again, thank you, uh, President Glover, uh, uh, President Galba, for your leadership with the TSU NAA. You know, you talked about being innovative. You are indeed a young, innovative leader that is taking this organization to uh, unprecedented heights. So thank you for that. Uh, it, it is an exciting time off of 3500 John Merritt Boulevard. Uh, our athletics department uh, is uh, thriving and we have a lot of positive momentum in what we call Roar City. Uh, some people have asked where Roar City come from. Yeah, well, right. uh, when, I got, when, I, when I took over the athletics department, I saw that the ticket office of uh, the main hotline, the number uh, to buy season tickets was 615-963-ROAR. So I said, okay, tigers roar, lions roar. Uh, you know, my belly roars when my wife, <laughs> when I smell my wife's cooking and uh, and it's always hungry and I'm always hungry for championships. Right. So, uh, you know, it led me to 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 think that, hey, let's let's use this, you know, as um, our identity to really ingratiate uh, Tennessee State Athletics with the community in Nashville. You've heard the Predators, they have Smashville. The Titans have Titans up. So uh, Roar City will be our tag, and uh, it's, it's going to be uh, what we'll use to make sure that everybody knows that there's great things going on. We're going to roar. We're going to be loud, but in a good way, uh, in a way where we're, uh, we're out here competing and have a product that you as alums can feel proud about, whether it's football, basketball, uh, tennis, golf, uh, track and field. Uh, we have the leadership in place. Uh, and I've been here now approaching a year and we have great leadership that I feel is going to really just trans 
uh, transition us uh, into future success. Uh, speaking of that new leadership and that leadership that we have on campus, uh, it's not a secret that I've hired a gentleman that I firmly believe in. It's going to take our legendary football program to the next level. Uh, we've had a lot of legends that have been a part of this special program that I inherited and took over uh, a year ago. And I want to, uh, to take that program and put it back in the national spotlight. Uh, you know, we, we talk about our facility footprint, me and me and Coach George and what we need to do there. Uh, he's been a prolific fundraiser. I've been been a fundraiser uh, that have closed major gifts. And we also have a president that's been a prolific fund fundraiser as well. And we're all aligned right now in terms of the investment uh, that's been made in our football program. And, you know, it has been a, an investment, but we know that that investment not only touches athletics, but it's going to also transcend amongst all areas of our campus at large. And that's what the hire was was about in, in terms of making sure that we had leadership in place that could teach, mold, develop our football student athletes. And what what a what a leader we have in Eddie George, you know, someone who's played the game at a high level that has a great football mind. We've seen him in, in uh, on TV really as an analyst, right? Articulating what he would do in certain situations. And uh, I, I saw him on college game day. And one time I said, man, he's got it. You know, if he was a head coach, he's someone that could really come in. Uh, we have student athletes now. They want to know, hey, have you done it? Have you been there? Have you been in the trenches? Yeah. And he has, you know, in his professional career as a, as a legendary Titan, uh, we talk about these yellow jackets that are out here in Canton and, and guys that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Right. I mean, soon we'll have his yellow jacket. But, hey, before he puts that yellow coat on, he'll have a blue jacket. He'll take off. You're but, right about <laughs> it. <laughs> we, look forward, we look forward, President Galbert, to, of, of him, uh, you know, one day being there in Canton, Ohio. But there's just a lot of excitement uh, around our young men in our building and our young men, women right now. And it all goes hand in hand. We know as an athletics department, we are the glue. We're the marketing arm for the university. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to serve in that capacity, bring our alums together. We, we're going to be playing this fall. Uh, we opened up in, in Canton, Ohio, uh, in the Black College Football uh, uh, Hall of Fame game there. So we play Grambling September the 5th. Our first game will be at home. We want everybody to come support Coach George in, in Nissan Stadium September the 18th versus Kentucky State. And I'm telling you, it's going to be electric. And Coach is looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. The prospects of getting our people back on campus so you can socialize, catch up with old friends, uh, your professors, and really be back to a place where, where I know many of you call home your or, your, or your primary, your secondary home. And, uh, and so with my leadership, we want to continue the momentum that we have in athletics. And uh, and we want you all to be in part a part of that. We're going to we're going to we have some ideas of bringing Roar City to your city. Uh, we've talked about markets where we know we have a strong contingent. Atlanta, Georgia, Memphis, Tennessee, the Ohio area, Detroit, uh, here in Nashville, in our community. So we want to have a forum where we bring uh, our athletics department to you, along with our uh, our institutional advancement officers. We have a great one in Miss Debbie Howard. We're glad to have her. But we want to bring our, our department to your area so we can do those things in terms of educating you on what we're, the great things we're doing in athletics, but also talking about how we need students to get back in this fold and be big blue. There's a yeah. lot of bright students out there, and we want them to be big blue. And uh, wait, man, it's it's a lot of a lot of byproduct, and a lot of uh, the pipeline has just been fruitful, man. We've got doctors, engineers, uh, entrepreneurs that all come from this university, and it's going to continue. But we need everybody's support, not only on the athletic side. We need you to lock in and serve and help us support all the areas, all the areas. So that's my remarks. Uh, go Big Blue, and I look forward to answering your questions later on. Awesome. Thank you so much. You see, you all feel the energy. I, I definitely feel it every time we speak. Uh, TSU is up to some great things, and of course, I love that you explained Roar City, because that has been something that people have asked many questions about, and you know, I think that it's it's great when you can truly have that pinpoint moment where you decided that Roar City should come to life, and we definitely want to, with the Alumni Association, do our part to help you make Roar City 
a, a real place, a place that wins, a place uh, of determination, a place where we can nurture our student athletes so that they can go off into the pros and, and, and go off into their families and their communities and have that same roar. So I'm excited about Roar City and I'm 100% behind it. All right. So let us bring to the floor uh, another member of, of course, Roar City, but also we can say the man of the hour. I know a lot of you ladies, we won't tell his wife, uh, but I know a lot of you ladies showed up uh, to see our next guest, our, our man of the hour. Uh, I am so excited to introduce to you all um, to the Big Blue family. And, and let me say also welcome him into the Big Blue family. Uh, he, he definitely has quite the accolades, a Heisman Trophy Award winner. Uh, he has several records that he has, has uh, been at the top of his game, breaking those records at his college, breaking some records in the NFL, and of course now breaking a record at Tennessee State University, um, bringing that NFL experience. You know, I can't wait for this Deion Sanders Eddie George battle in in uh, Memphis in the upcoming months, but the reality is that we got the Titans. So if this is a clash of Titans, we got this. So I'm excited to bring to you all um, the Big Blue family, the new coach of the new head coach of Tennessee State University football team, Coach Eddie George. Hey, President, Hi, President Goldberg. Goldberg. How you, How you doing, man? Coach George? How you doing? I'm blessed, I'm blessed and highly favored, man. I'm yes, sir. Um, about this opportunity, first and foremost, I got to give uh, all my love and uh, and and really uh, thank President Glover for uh, believing in me, uh, for having the vision of seeing me as a head coach along with Dr. Allen. Uh, sometimes it takes for somebody to see something in you that you don't see in yourself, yeah. and they were very persistent. Uh, would not take no for an answer. <laughs> and, uh, once they shared their, showed me their vision, shared their passion, uh, just where they wanted to take Tennessee State, uh, I did a lot of soul searching and um, it really found in my spirit that this is what I needed to do. Um, you know, coaching is truly a calling. This is not something that you, you can just wake up and say, hey, I'm going to go do this. It's something that you're serving. You're serving um, a, an institution. You're serving young men. And uh, that's first and foremost, uh, forefront of my mind is how am I going to improve their quality of life while here at Tennessee State University on the field, off the field, spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, I'm going to treat these young men as if they were my sons. Um, and really, uh, the, the, over the last 30 days has just been a one with rolling up our sleeves, uh, getting the staff in, uh, finalizing my staff. Uh, changing some things uh, within the, within the, the, the facilities, uh, looking to uh, uh, build a, a new uh, weight room along with our third floor offices so it could be a nice, fresh feel, new look, and uh, just really exciting things in store for our football program that our young men can come back to and say, hey, this is a new era, a new time, and um, they're going to appreciate that. So I'm really, really excited about this season, excited about being on this uh, this uh, virtual chat here to the Big Blue Nation, uh, get our fans excited. You know, it's going to be uh, a rocking time this uh, this season. And I'm telling you right now, everybody, get your blue out, get it ready. <laughs> We're going to be ready to rock on, on the road up to Canton to take on Grambling State and then on to Memphis to take on uh, Jackson State University. It's going to be cold blue. So blue. <laughs> I'm telling you, wear your blue. Because we're going to represent in there, and I'm really excited about it. Because our, our product on this field is to establish our culture and uh, who we're going to be from this point on. And um, I'm really excited about the staff that I'm bringing in, the philosophies that we're instilling, and uh, the pillars that, that we're creating. Absolutely awesome. Well, again, welcome. You know, um, I represent a lot of Tigers. I, I represent, first of all, the National Executive Board. So thank them for their work um, and chapter presidents across the country. We have chapters in most cities across this country. We are an amazing alumni association. So I definitely greet you on behalf of our alumni association. Um, I thank you for, for joining us um, tonight uh, for this conversation. I, as, I, I, as I was speaking earlier, I, I just wanted to let us just relax and, and have some flow of dialogue. Um, you all gave some great information in your remarks, but I wanna get a little bit deeper. So if you all will join me, the first question that I have for you all, you know, we've noticed a, a trend 
um, you are definitely a part of a trend, Coach George, um, where we have um, Coach Deion Sanders at Jackson State. Uh, you now hear that Claire Huxtable, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alicia Rashad, will be yeah. uh, a dean at Howard. So um, I just want to hear both of your thoughts on with this this celebrityism or this this um, notoriety. How do you see this affecting HBCUs across the board? Well, um, I'll go. I think it's going to affect them in a positive way. Um, you know, people look at it and say, well, it's just celebrity. It's, it's just for a splash. It's just for a spike. And, but prior to, to me taking on this opportunity for me personally, it, it, can, it can't be just a spike for me. It, it has to be uh, something that's going to be sustainable. Uh, so when my time is up here, I'm handing something off to someone else that's in a much better shape than it was when I got it. So um, I think it's tremendous. I think it brings a lot of light, a lot of uh, notoriety to it. But now it's about really putting in the work and putting together uh, a program um, that's going to be sustainable throughout time. And it's going to raise the boat in terms of the institution itself, uh, in terms of what Tennessee State is known for. You know, you look at um, any institution, uh, whether Ohio State, Tennessee, um, Nebraska, um, the eyeballs of the institution runs through the football team, yeah. you know, and, and that's that's what it is. And if we can put a winning product on the field, um, show our what our university is all about across the board, the different colleges, the different attributes, the, who we're who we're producing in the world, um, leaders, great people um, that are that are affecting change. Uh, that's 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 what it's all about, and I think it, it's only great. You know, these institutions have been around for o over a hundred years and um, have great tradition. Uh, but I, I think there is uh, another level that we all can go to. I think with myself, with uh, Dion being at Jackson State, and now um, Claire Huxtable at Howard, um, it just raises the bar a little bit more for our institutions. I think it's phenomenal. Absolutely, absolutely. Any thoughts on that, Dr. Allen? No, one that, one that we uh, we have uh, that's been a part of our institution uh, the last last few semesters is uh, Reverend Al Sharpton. Mm -hmm. So we've been very proud about uh, his his connection to the university and the role that he served and the capacity that he's, uh, he's serviced the university in. But to Eddie's point, uh, you know, the HBCU landscape uh, yeah, you're starting to see some some entertainers come into it, but they all are, are, are highly educated and they understand what the purpose and what the mission of the institutions were, why mm -hmm. they were established. And um, and Eddie, Eddie is 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 always uh, talked about as he's talked about this position and him taking over as a leader of our football program. Uh, you know, the place that he's in, uh, you know, the responsibility that he has to these young men and the responsibility that he has to the student body and to the community at large. And uh, just to hear that from him time and time again is something that, uh, you know, it, it, really, it really says, hey, he's supposed to be in this position. Yeah. You know, I definitely, definitely, those are great remarks. You know, we have a great opportunity. The more you can get our message, our students, our faces, our, our skills and talents in front of this world, I think it, it can be more beautiful. And sometimes you have to ride um, the Big Dipper. What What is that? The, the stars, the alignment of the stars to be poured back onto the world. So I'm excited about the movement. And I think that this is definitely something that um, will be a benefit to, to HBCUs all over. Um, I do want to bring back um, Dr. Glover for, for this conversation as well. Um, she's waiting um, in the background. Hi, Dr. Glover. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, what are your thoughts? You know, you, you're part of this trend. You are an, uh, a, an HBCU president, first of all, a, a star within your own right, um, and <laughs> bringing other stars to the table, um, really um, seeing potential in what um, high profile individuals can do for HBCU. So, what are some of your thoughts? Well, I think it shows the value proposition of HBCUs. It's raising the profile of HBCUs nationwide. I think this whole of this new administration is doing it. I think this is the year of HBCU and, 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 and who we are around the world. And as far as TSU is concerned, our applications are up. People see the what's happening. They see uh, Coach George, 
Uh, they see uh, A.B. Allen. <laughs> they see Master P. bringing his son, playing my role, son. They see what, what, what Covington has done. I think they can see the, what it means to come back and support HBCUs. And for, and for Felicia to go back to Howard uh, as a dean is, is very telling about where we are with HBCUs overall in the country. It shows that the star power means something. You produce a great uh, individual. That person comes back to share their talent with their own institution that gave them their star. But there's a lot to be said about that. Absolutely. Great points. Great points. So let us move along to some, some other questions. A.D. Allen, this one I'll, I'll shoot at you. Um, we are definitely an alumni family that is all about tradition. We are in love with the whole. Tell us a little bit about vision for the whole. Where do we stand with the whole? Will we play games in the whole? Just give us some information about that, if you don't mind. No problem. And I, hey, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist as well. Um, I've looked at the history of the whole. First game was 1953. They're right. And um, me and Coach George have we've talked about it extensively. Uh, and in various companies that he's been involved with. Uh, he's been a part of feasibility studies. He understands that as well as I do, as well as Dr. Glover does. So uh, we talked about getting the spirit back on campus, but that's gonna take um, a process. And that's a process that we've all talked about. Uh, the, the three individuals that are before you tonight, uh, we do understand that that would be Fantastic. If we could have a night game, you know, I think the last night game in, in, in William Jasper Hill Stadium was in the late 90s, I want to say around 98, 99. But this year uh, and until we can address, uh, you know, our fan experience and the amenities there at the whole, we'll be playing all of our contests this year, starting this year at Nissan Stadium. But do believe we want to get back on campus and uh, we have a plan uh, to attack attack that and, and, and to make that a reality. So uh, hang in there, uh, you know, and, and where there's a will, there's a way. I'll just say that. Absolutely. Coach George, so uh, give us give us um, a little bit of your coaching philosophy. What What is a, a TSU Tiger uh, going to learn from Coach Eddie George that's going to get their game up? Oh, wow. Um, first and foremost, I, I, I'm, I'm coming in to understand uh, what these young men have gone through, what they've been through, um, where they are now, and what they want, what they really want. Because I know what I want. You know, I, I want championships. But it, you have to coach people differently. I, I believe that you coach with uh, a sensitivity. You coach differently for different people. You motivate differently. And that's what I believed in as a leader on every level that I've been on. Um, so with that being said, you know, we're going to preach discipline. Um, that's going to be the number one thing that I see is discipline to be on time, uh, to take uh, copious notes, uh, to uh, to be engaged, to be enthusiastic, to be tenacious, to be a student of the game, um, to be gritty. Um, that's Those are the things that I, I believe uh, wins championships and creates a championship culture. Um, you know, just getting my staff in um, over the next couple of days, you know, those things will be defined in goals and, and aspirations that we want to accomplish this year. Um, but what I see on film, I see some young men that have talent. I see the passion is there. Um, they just has to be molded and guided in a certain way. And I'm going to put my thumbprint on that. And uh, that being said, you know, uh, you can expect to see a team that's well conditioned. That, that's what you want to see. You want to see their bodies change. I, I guarantee you that. I don't know how many games we want to win. But I guarantee you, they're going to look different, okay? And uh, when they when they hit, it'll be with bad intentions on both sides. <laughs> of the ball. So we're gonna we're gonna build this thing inside out. I've always believed that everything starts where where the ball starts. It's the center, inside out, in the trenches. And uh, I believe if you can control the middle of the field with the uh, power run attack, that it opens everything up. And the same holds true with uh, with the defense. Is uh, is establishing an edge and forcing everybody back inside to have a fist fight. And that's mm. what we're going to preach, and that's what we want to do. You like that, Dr. Glower, didn't you? <laughs> that's that competitive spirit. I love it. <laughs> President, President Glover, and I promise him I, I would not text, text any plays down to him on the field. 
<laughs> you had your fingers crossed when you promised that. I know take you did. Take him out, bitch him. I was like, oh, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to promise I won't text. <laughs> so I might pick up where you left off. Yeah, so this is good. <laughs> yeah, but, hey, the president, President uh, Galbraith, I mean, that's how when you look back at the history of Tennessee State football, when Tennessee State football was at its best, they had, you know, the, the, the young man playing the game had a tough mindset, right? They, uh, you know, they worked hard, they trained hard, they were brothers, both on and off the field, but they played with tenacity. They played like, hey, we cannot let somebody come in this stadium and take what's ours. Yeah. You know, because we were at Tennessee State University, the Tennessee State University. And going forward, that's the approach. Nothing more, nothing less. When we line up in between the lines, that's the approach that our young men have to take. And it mirrors why this program was special. And we're going to continue that going forward with, with Coach Eddie Jordan. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Uh, we we have a lot of questions around um, the conference. You know, we're OBC. Um, how long are we OVC? Is that something that we're looking at at changing? Um, what are what are some of the opportunities that we have conference wise? And I'll let that be, Doctor Glover, Doctor Allen. Yeah, whoever and, wants and, to and that's, we've had some discussions on that. Um, we don't have any new information to provide right now, but uh, we have been in some discussions. We had an opportunity to talk to. Uh, another conference, the ASON conference, but it didn't really work out the way we wanted it to. So that was um, a no-go for us. But Dr. Allen and I can, have had these conversations and we're continuing to engage these conversations. Dr. Allen, you want to add anything to that? No, I mean, um, the, the conference, uh, the member, there's been a couple of member institutions that have left OVC, uh, Eastern Kentucky, and Jacksonville State. So Dr. Glover uh, and I, we've We've communicated that we would love for uh, the member institutions in the, in the OBC conference and the commissioner to consider an HBCU, uh, HBCU member institutions, really, uh, to add to the fold. That would be great. So that's something that we're advocating for. But uh, to, to Dr. Glover's point, uh, we have, uh, we've listened, but nothing has been, been determined where we need to leave the conference today. And we will Absolutely. seek your input. You know, we had something that's, that's on the table that's really uh, that's close to, I mean, some real serious conversations. We would not do it without your input, alumni input, and other input from the voices that we trust. Thank you, thank you. Um, Coach George, I'll bring you um, into this one. Um, and this is actually for you and, and Dr. Allen. Uh, we've noticed within, I guess, the last month, uh, the statement was made that there were no HB and let me get this correct. There were no HBCU uh, right. athletes in the 2021 draft. Uh, as far as recruitment strategy and as far as getting our our students athletes prepared for opportunities such as the pros, um, what are some of your recruitment strategies um, and and what are some of your thoughts around that that idea that there were no HBCU? Well, um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, I think, you know, the, the HBCUs, some of them played games this year, and that impacted their draft status. Um, some of them um, are probably were draftable, but it just didn't work out this way. We were talking about an atypical year with COVID, you know, in the pandemic. So uh, I don't look too much into that. There, there isn't talent there. Um, but my, my personal beliefs in terms of my recruiting strategy is uh, to develop guys for that um i'm not uh, listen i'll take talented guys i'll take the quote-unquote five-star four guys star guys i don't really look into that I'm, i want to take somebody with great character great work ethic someone that wants to learn wants to build wants to grow and he's going to be surrounded by teachers that can help him get to that level stay at that level and go beyond that level to uh, a, a life that permeates into business or whatever that is that his passion is. So we're into developing our young men um, for to be a professional on all levels. So you look at our staff, we have guys that have played, that have coached and played on the professional level, 
coached and played on the collegiate level and uh, that can prepare them just for that. And it's a, a beautiful mix of guys that are, are older, that are younger, that bring energy. Um, and that's one of my main things is to develop these young men into what they want to become. And they have to be really clear on that they really want to be great because it takes a lot that goes into that. And that's what they want to find out. We want to weed some people out. It may not be for you, and that's okay. But for guys that want to come here, if you want to uh, compete every day and reach a level of excellence every single day, that's how you're going to get challenged. That's how you're going to get motivated. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Allen, anything to add there? No, I think, you know, playing at the next level is definitely an aspiration that 90 plus percent of the student athletes that play the game of football want to uh, want to achieve. But there's a certain uh, there's a certain NFL way. And there's a certain uh, certain type of athlete uh, that NFL scouts and player personnel that they're looking for. One of our recruiting tools will be the fact that we're going to have individuals that, in the building that have played ten plus years, you know, with the steel on on their on their jersey, and they can communicate the NFL way in terms of how you prepare to, for competition, how you compete, uh, you know, and and then how you, do you do you invest in uh, your own personal development to 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 get yourself to a level where you are draftable. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the HBCU space, Tennessee State leads all HBCUs and putting players in the NFL over 120 plus. Our last two NFL athletes, uh, former student athletes, Chris Rowe and Tavia Simmons. You know, yeah. we, <laughs> Tennessee State has has never been short of, right. of putting. NFL make make it NFL athletes. That's a fact. Uh, so we're gonna continue that. And uh but I just think it's been it was an odd year this year, uh, because a lot of the HBCUs played in the spring and then obviously the draft was subsequently after that. So uh but I, I think you know with with I know with our coach we're gonna continue putting putting uh putting our our, our talented young men uh on that stage as something that's a priority for us. But we also want to put them in other avenues and stages where they uh, where they can go on and be successful, even if they do not play in the NFL, that's first and foremost. And let me and let me add to that. You know, this is just not about preparing guys to go to the NFL, and that's it. I think that's where you're selling them short. Um, it's preparing them for life after football, football, basketball, baseball, soccer. All sports are just a platform for the rest of your life. It's the lessons that you learn through that. It's the relationships that you pour through it. It's the experiences that will propel, will continue to to help you guide you through um, the, the rest of your life that you can uh, pass on to your children. So that's what's important for me is that these young men are prepared for life and that they're Absolutely. not stuck on just getting to the NFL and that's it. I've seen several guys, you know, in my class alone from Ohio State have been passed away because mm -hmm. of a lack of purpose. Mm -hmm. All their age in one basket to get to the league. And guess what? They had a cup of coffee in the league and that was it. And they were right. defined by that. Mm -hmm. So once that identity as a football player died, their self-esteem died. Mm -hmm. died. So any, any young man that comes to my programs understand, listen, it's not just about football. I'm going to help you get to the league. If yeah. you don't get there, you're going to come damn close. If you don't come, if you don't go to the league, well, you're going to win championships in the business world. You would have won championships as a, um, in the medical world or whatever profession you choose to go into, you're going to go in there and put excellence on that. You're going to operate a certain way. You're going to have a system that you can rely on. So Absolutely. that's what I'm talking about, not just getting guys to the lead, because that's the setup. That's the failure. I think Absolutely. it's beyond that, and, and it goes into generations beyond that. Uh, that's a great that's Thank a great you. point coach that's a great point i mean we you know there's a there's a young man played uh for tennessee state uh named charles wade those he who's a uh an entrepreneur but has uh restaurants uh that he you know that we, we've heard about and they they thrive right we're, we're trying to develop those guys that 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 speaks to the nfl to, to us you know those those type of individuals that represent uh, Tennessee State University, but come out of whatever sport pipeline they come out of, but uh, that we're proud about that are doing great things. So I just echo what folks is, is saying. That's so awesome. I want to definitely thank Dr. Glover. I know that you have another engagement 
Uh, it's always a blessing when you're able to join us within the Alumni Association and, and speak to us. So do you have any um, final words uh, on your segment? before you leave us? But, you know, well, two things. One, it's just not it's just not simple enough engagement. It's, a, it's a, an activity that's going to be streamed on the Oprah show. Oh, awesome. <laughs> we just, that's uh, great. We just, uh, made, we just arranged to get some more scholarships. Really. That's awesome. But, but it hasn't been totally worked out. We're, we're close to getting that done. So kind of want to keep that one going tonight. I think that's where you should go. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, and I appreciate this. And so I look forward to I'll just listen to the rest of it later. Absolutely. So, Thank you. And you are off to do your hard work. So I appreciate all your work that you're doing for TSU. Thank and just you. you keep up the great work and you're in our prayers each and every day. So thank you. Thank you, Shiva. Tell Oprah I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us <say> hello too. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for joining us. And we'll continue. I have a few more questions for you all. Um, uh, Dr. Allen. Um, as far as um, with the athletic fund, give us a little bit more uh, information about um, the athletic fund, what, what your hopes are for it, um, how we can get involved with it. Absolutely. So we um, we have areas where corporations, I mentioned James, I meant to say James Wade, uh, we have areas where corporations uh, could provide resources for us from a, a gift and kind standpoint. So if that's equipment, um, if they're vendors that can provide uh, supplemental meals for our student athletes, there's spaces there on TSUathleticfund.com. So you can look at those programs. We have a young alumni program where we want to uh, make sure that there's a, a reasonable entry point for our young alums that are three years removed uh, from Tennessee State to become a part of our athletic fund. Uh, additionally, uh, another program that I'm, I'm I'm excited about is our Junior Tigers Club. It's important that from an early age <laughs> that, that we introduce um, everyone that wants to be a part of the Big Blue family, uh, we introduce them to TSU Athletics. So I'm excited we'll, we'll have activities and ways to get the youth involved with our program. You know, in, in one of the areas we, we, we're approaching summer camps. So uh, we're, we're excited about that. Uh, we also have entry points where, um, you know, to, to become a season ticket holder, we are asking that you make a contribution between $100 and $300 to our, our athletic scholarship fund or our annual fund, and then that gives you the right to become a season ticket holder. Uh, so that, that range is there because some people might want to sit in the end zone. Uh, I know our prime areas, right, or our home sidelines uh, in between the 30s. Right. So everybody wants that panoramic view. Right. Uh, so, so obviously the donation requirement uh, will be uh, closer to the 300 than, than the hundred hundred dollar level donation. But uh, season tickets, um, you know, will be pretty reasonable, uh, very similar to what our alums have been accustomed to doing. Um, and, and so we also have uh, one of the one of the areas I want to mention is you can sp uh, support any program that you have a high affinity for. So if you are a track and field uh, enthusiast, you can support through our sports specific giving uh, area. Um, all of our sports programs have a foundation account. So you can make a contribution to enhance the facility need uh, that our sports program might have. I know track and field, uh, we're gonna make a strong push here to get an indoor and outdoor resurfacing of our tracks. Uh, that's very important. We have an illustrious track program uh, at Edward Temple Track. It's important to me that we address that track uh, and that surface because we have the opportunity being in Nashville to host meets, to host state track meets. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm tired of the the state track and field meet, the state football uh, championship being in Cookville, Tennessee. You know, that needs to be on our campus. Uh, there's a tremendous opportunity for us to recruit uh, at home and to showcase the great campus that we have to offer, right? So um, so that's a big push, but so that sports specific giving is an area where all sports can benefit as well as the, they, they will be the beneficiaries, our student athletes of individuals supporting our annual fund, which gives you the right to be, become a season ticket holder. Um, outside of that, we do have some capital projects. Coach George uh, hit on it. We do want to make sure that we have a weight room that we're proud about that our student athletes can work out uh, from a strength 
strength and, and performance standpoint, uh, become stronger athletes uh, from a nutritional uh, add value standpoint. We will have fueling stations nearby that we want, want to have in our facilities that our student athletes train and, and, and operate in on a day-to-day -day basis. And then that last area uh, that we really want to pay attention to is our student athlete development area. Uh, Coach George hit on that as well. We want to make sure that we have career and professional development programming, uh, servant leadership programming. It's important that our student athletes really dive in and become a part of their community, whether it's working at a Boys and Girls Club, cleaning up, uh, offering their services, volunteering their time. We can't ask, uh, you know, the Big Blue family to support us um, in, 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 in terms of our fans and, and our surroundings if we're not and totally invested in what they're doing from a grassroots level, from a community Absolutely. standpoint. So that's highly important to both Coach George and I. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a student athlete area that if you want to support our academic programs or our career and professional development programs, there's ways that you can do that uh, to really just, just provide that first class experience for our student athletes. That's why we're in business. That's why I get a direct direct deposit. That's why coach does. We're here to be uh, vehicles and teachers of young men and women and just transfer the knowledge that we've had being student athletes uh, and, and to have a huge impact on, on the next person's life. So uh, yeah. we're totally blessed and we feel that we're here for a special purpose and we're just going to execute that purpose. That's awesome. I, you know, and I'm all in, as you know, um, I've, I've told you before, whatever support you need, I'm, I'm here for you, but especially with the development, I work in leadership development. I work in working with youth and growing youth. So whatever you need from a training standpoint, whatever you need from a speaking standpoint, know that that I'm there with you to help uh, to develop these young young students that we have. Now, we um, appreciate that. And, and I'd, I'd like to say this with uh, under the umbrella of the TSU NAA, right? There's great chapters. Uh, I mean, you're talking about chapters that have been with the university for years in terms of the support on various areas, scholarship needs. There's just been so many ways that everyone connected to, to this brand, this alumni association has serviced the university. Uh, and, and I know that's going to continue uh, in various ways. But as it pertains to athletics, what me, Coach George, are asking is that with your specific chapters, there's a big blue rep program. So we want to showcase those chapters that are going to go uh, the extra mile to make sure that our student athletes have the best possible resources, not just in the OVC, but nationwide. Because we, right. hey, we, we, have a, we have a lens that's much wider than the conference right. in which we play in. We have goals and aspirations to achieve things much larger than where we currently are. And that's where we need your support. That's where we need you to spread the word on, hey, you know, for $100, join the, join the Tennessee State Athletic Fund. I know that Coach George, Dr. Allen, they're going to use that money and they're going to pour into the next generation of Tigers. So that's where I need you guys to step up. And, and I, know, I know with this Big Blue family, I've been a part uh, of it as a youngster. My grandparents went here. My wife's been a part of it. Uh, you know, I've always been back to events and I've always looked around, man. Anytime I've come to a Tennessee State Athletic event and it just I've I've been there and I'm like, wow, this is this is something that you just cannot recreate at a right. campus, a PWI campus where me and Eddie went. It yeah. doesn't exist. The Divine yeah. Nine, how it rocks, the band, everything <laughs> right. is just the pageantry is there, man. And so what Absolutely. we gotta do is I get it when you come back to games this year, have your fun. But go on in there and step in Nissan Stadium and peek, peek, do a peekaboo and see what we're doing in, 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 in between those lines. Because that's Absolutely. what we need you. Cheering, being proud, like, like Coach George said, wear your blue. If you come to the game, you know, even if you got your Greek letters on, I'm Greek, K A S I to the day I die. Coach, <laughs> Coach George, hey, he, he's throwing the hooks up. You see it? Yeah. Hey, Can't so, leave out hey, the, the, the oldest and the coldest. Yeah, the yeah, but <laughs> the black and gold. I love all the brothers. I love all the si sisters who represent those proud organizations. But we all have one organization and one, one love, and that's that big blue. 
So that's an opportunity at a sporting event where we all can come together and rep, step, do whatever we need to make sure that everybody knows that, hey, this is this is our crew and it's all blue. So that's where we need you guys to step up. Okay. Right. Coach George. So, you know, I, I have to ask the question for the culture. So, you know, we were all um, there with you last week with SWB and Escape. You know, we you can't leave leave your, your beautiful wife out. I saw her repping TSU on her Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Um, will we see SWB and the AOB possibly do a knockout collab sometime during the year? Is that something I can put in your ear? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I think it's uh, it's definitely possible. I mean, you got to <laughs> talk to that manager. I, I'm not in that business. She, you know, very sensitive when I try to tell her what to do with her business. She's like, nah, I got this. I've been doing this longer than you've been playing football. So, <laughs> you know, she's um, a very proud of her. I thought that last week, if, 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 if people didn't see it, I thought Versus was, was awesome. Um, lacked yeah. a little energy in the beginning, you know, it was, it was interesting. Uh, but, uh, for the most part, they were very professional. Uh, both escape and SWV came to play, uh, showed out, uh, put on a great performance. And, uh, my wife's very excited to be a part of the Tennessee state, uh, university family, big blue. She reps it. She talks about it. Um, very proud to be a part of it. So I could definitely see some collaborations if it's open and welcome to to do all of that, absolutely. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, 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 hey, 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 Prez, I told me and me and Coach, we were talking. I said, "Hey, man, I love I love Escape, but hit after hit, it was hard. <laughs> hey, it was hard. Hey, SUV, man, they got a long, long, long list, <laughs> and it's not the hey, it wasn't. Hey, we wrote this song. No, it's it was a it was, hit. Yeah." yeah. Right, there's history there. It was but, uh, you right know. down the line. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I can I can see uh game. yeah I can see yeah. our our uh the yeah. risk yeah. of bands man hitting yeah. hit weak right rain yeah 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 I talk hey we need to we need to get Doctor McDonald on board man look at him uh, man let me text him after this yeah. like yeah. look what I just set up for you frat yeah <laughs> but no man he doesn't man I've I've been to one of his practices I I want to I want Eddie to attend one. Man, he don't play, man. He doesn't play. But yeah. the, the discipline is there, and it, it really mirrors what me and Eddie have been talking about with all of our sports programs. And that's what, it's, that's what it takes. And then at the end of the day, that's why the end product, everybody wants to be around that band because it's going to be first class. No it's going to be on point, no question. And we, we, we talked about it. We want to support the band and do some things. I know they Absolutely. got the parade uh, that they're trying to get to in, uh, in California, the Rose Parade, whatever we can do from our pipeline of, of corporations and people that want to be a part of what we're doing, we're going to continue to spread the love because that's what it's about. Absolutely. So we are, I, you know, I appreciate you both. Uh, this has been a, a cool conversation. Believe it or not, we have covered a lot of grounds. We've talked about some, some purpose and power and we talked yeah. about resources and funding and we talked about the culture, of course, and HBCUs, um, how they're blossoming blossoming and, and we can all be a part of that. So again, I just thank you. I'm really excited about what's happening in Tennessee State University and in particularly Roar City. I'm just excited. Um, I, I wanna give us an opportunity to just have some closing remarks. So Dr. Allen, I will start with you if you have anything that you just wanna close out with. Yes, I do. You know, our accessibility, we wanna, um, we wanna continue to be in these forms. Uh, you know, hopefully we get to a to back to a state of normalcy where, again, that we can have events and mixers where we can, you know, just, just spend time with you as alums, uh, spend time with you, uh, just bring you into what we're doing uh, from an athletic standpoint. We understand our role and purpose uh, to your institution is to be the marketing arm for the institution, uh, to compete at a high level, to win championships but to represent you as alums of Tennessee State University in a first-class manner as a leader of athletics. That's what I will continue to communicate, communicate to our young people and to our head coaches that that's our role, to make sure that our student athletes represent the university in a first-class manner, that they graduate, that they not only compete for championships while they're student athletes, but they compete in the job market, that they go on to be successful 
And then one day we can call on them to become donors and to support their colleges. And that's what that's what we're about. Uh, that's what my leadership's about. And I'm just proud that I have someone uh, that's the leader of our football program, our 22nd head coach uh, in this illustrious program's history that's been filled with giants, right, that, that's produced giants like Richard Dent, Claude Humphreys, uh, Gerald McRae, uh, James Wade, I mentioned. Uh, there's just so many, you know, so many big time, Mike Jones, there's just so many big time athletes uh, that have come from this program, from football to track and field. We have one at Chandra Cheeseboro, our, our head women's track coach, has done a phenomenal job. It's been a championship level coach, uh, Ralph Boston. So, I, you know, I mean, you look on the basketball side of the house, uh, you know, from uh, Dick Barnett to Robert Covington to uh, Anthony Mason. It's just so many athletes that have touched this campus that we want to continue that. We want you all to be proud of them. We want to develop them where they'll become the next names, right? And the next leaders of your institution. So we appreciate uh, this forum. We appreciate President Galbraith again and his leadership and the, the innovative things that he's doing to bring the, the Big Blue community together. So we'll continue to be a part of it. And thank you and go Big Blue. Thank you. And um, we will go, uh, Coach George, your, your final remarks. Yeah, I, I'm going to keep mine brief. I mean, Mickey touched on a lot. Um, we echo some of the same things. Um, I'd like to say that I'm extremely proud to be the head coach of Tennessee State University, uh, the football team. Um, this is going to be an exciting time uh, for this university, for me personally. Uh, can't wait to get back on the gridiron in a different capacity. Um, uh, and, I, and I really encourage you, uh, all the alumni, to come out and support. Like, like Mickey said, you know, it's not about uh, just giving your money away. You're making, you're truly making an investment, and the return on your investment is going to produce a young man or young lady in this world that's going to affect change and do, going to do great things. So don't think of it as just giving away money uh, or as a tax write-off. You're really truly making a, an investment in our program and our children uh, to to have a greater future. Um, I, I believe this is the start of something special. Um, I ask for your patience. Um, I ask that you come to the game, uh, be loud, make a difference. And uh, like, like Coach Mick said, or like President Mick said, uh, or AD Mick said, uh, that uh, we're trying to get that home field advantage back to the hole. That's, 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 that's the number one priority for me in some form or fashion is figuring that out and what that looks like because there's nothing like having the game day on Tennessee State University campus. Nothing like it at all. And um, that's that's my number one goal in the, in the near future. So with that being said, I'm excited about this year. Please, I can't wait to see you at the games. Scream loud, have a great time, and bring us on the victory. Go Big Blue. Awesome, I appreciate you again. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. We are getting an abundance of questions. I, I wish we could keep going. Um, I do see that um, we have some some alum who are interested in partnering with the athletics program um, and, you know, offering some con consultation, um, some consulting skills and offering just some of their professions. Um, and so I know that this is not our last discussion. So what I'd like to do is um, on behalf of a lot of those comments and questions, I will be um, reviewing those. I'd love to bring some of those to both of you and see if there are some future opportunities for us to discuss. And as you all said, we I, it sounds like Aurora City Tours coming down the pike. So, <laughs> you know, maybe we can address some of those questions that are in the chat that we didn't get an opportunity to, to discuss tonight on that Aurora City Tour as we go around to chapters or as we have one of these settings again. Um, you know, thank you all to everyone who tuned in tonight. Uh, this is truly an opportunity for us to just get greater and greater and greater. I'm confident in our AD. I'm confident in our coach. I believe that Dr. Glover made a great decision in hiring both of you. And I just am very grateful that you are now part of the Big Blue family um, to the Big Blue family. I know that uh, we are getting back out there. We're getting ready for homecoming. We're getting ready for that great return. So I just wanted to kind of speak a blessing over your life as you are going through your days, your ins and outs, and as you're in your relationships, your families, um, within your friends, within your job, within your community, take TSU with you. Um, allow TSU to be a part of everything that you speak, a part of every walk that you, 
you you walk, every move that you make, keep TSU as a part of it. Find a way to, in your own way, roar throughout any mm-hmm. difficulty that you are facing, um, and may your days be greater than they have been. Um, I want to thank you, and again, thanks for tuning in to Roar City. Good evening, and blessings, actually big blue blessings to each and every one of you.